Sally Face isn't really a rough kind of guy, but he also isn't super into being soft. You're being such a good girl for me. He talked. Sal loved when you were just a mindless little baby for him. You were sitting on the floor in front of him, with your cheek against his leg as he absentmindedly rubs your hair and praises you. Oh, this was heaven for him. You were in Sally and his dad's apartment. You had just finished a rather long <clears throat> love making session. You look up at Sal's prominent features in his prospect mask, which was primarily white with a light pink patch over the right eye. He had blue eyes, the right one being from an ocular prosthetic from what had been seen on his face. He had a large scar that ran diagonally across the right side of his mouth, splitting his lips and exposing his teeth. A scar on his left cheek, as well as several other smaller scars, scattered across the rest of his face. There was a dent on the right side of his lower jaw, and some of the cartilage of his nose was completely missing. He had shoulder-length bright blue hair, which was usually kept tied into pigtails and two piercings in each ear. Sally was noticeably short, being second choice in his friend group. Now, while some people may think these were flaws, you personally thought your boyfriend was so beautiful. Sally looked down at you, his blue hair messy and his prosthetic face in place. He ran his fingers absently through your hair as he leaned against his leg, still feeling the soft after effects of the recent session. He couldn't help the slight smile that tugged on the corner of his lips. You really are being a good girl for me, he said. His voice was low and filled with affection. As he continued to lean against Sally's leg, he could feel the warmth of his body through his jeans. But he shifted slightly, a hand moving to the back of your hair. You know, Sally stated, his voice taking on a slightly more serious tone. There's, um, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. Your eyes widened slightly, the shift in Sally's tone making you a little apprehensive. You slowly lifted your head off his leg, sitting up straighter to look him at in the eye directly. Eh, what is it? You asked, a flicker of nervousness in your stomach. Sally's blue eyes held on to you for a moment, before he spoke. Uh, it's nothing bad, he assured you, his hands moving in comforting circles in your back. But I've been thinking... It's just, you know, we've been together for a while, and I just wanted to ask you something. Your heart skipped a beat. Sally kept taking long pauses as he spoke. You were nervous at why he couldn't even get it out. You waited for him to continue. You had a feeling that you, he was about to ask you something that you weren't going to like, but you couldn't help the fluttering in your chest. Okay. He said, your voice was a little breathless with anticipation. Sally's expression softened as he saw the look on your face. He knew you were probably feeling a mix of anxiety and excitement. Listen, you know I care about you a lot, right? He said, his voice was gentle with a little uncertainty. You nodded, feeling warm at his words. Of course I do, he said, smiling softly, meeting his gaze. I care about you too, Sal. You know that. He smiled, a hint of relief in his expression. Good. Because his hand started to trace on your back. I was just thinking about where our relationship is going. I wanted to ask you something serious. It felt like the air was sucked out of the room. Sally's words began to sink in. Your heart skipped a beat and you felt this feeling of unease settle in your stomach. You knew what he was going to say next. Even though you hoped it wouldn't happen, you couldn't stop the sinking feeling that it was about to. Sally cleared his throat, his eyes fixated on yours. He looked nervous, but his tone was firm. I think we need to talk about our relationship. The words hung in the air, heavy. You felt yourself tensing up. You had known this conversation was coming, but you just, you hoped it wouldn't have come so soon. What do you mean? You asked, your voice coming out a little shaky. Sally shifted, clearly uncomfortable with the conversation. He let out a slow breath. 
running his hand through his blue hair. I just, I think we need to take a step back, he said suddenly, his eyes meeting yours. I just, I don't think I'm in a good place for this right now. You felt your heart crumbling inside your chest, but you tried to keep your voice steady. What do you mean you're not in a good place? You asked, your eyes searching for any hint of what he was thinking. This came out of nowhere. You genuinely didn't get what he was trying to say. Sally let out a sigh, looking down at the floor. I've just, I've been struggling lately, he said, his voice low, with my own insecurities and issues, and I feel like I need to work on that before I can be with you. You felt your entire body tensing up, the words hitting you like a punched gut. You had known Sally struggled with his own issues, but you hoped he would work with them by your side. But what about us? He asked, your voice slightly cracking. Sally looked at you, pain etched across his face. I care about you, he said, his eyes meaning yours. But I can't be the partner you deserve right now. I need to focus on myself, and I need to do it alone. He felt like your heart was breaking into a million pieces at Sally's cheap excuse. It felt like it was such bullshit. But you guess when you really thought into it, he was right. He did have to focus on himself before he could focus on you. You took a big deep breath, trying to understand your emotions, keep them in check. I understand, he said, voice trembling. I, I just wish things weren't different. Sally reached out, gently taking your hand in his. I do too, he said, his voice soft. You've been so good to me. I just, I need to do this on my own, for now at least. You felt your eyes sting with the beginning of tears. He fought them back. You knew Sally was making the right decision, even if it hurt like hell. What about us? Will we still be friends? You asked your voice was laced with a hint of vulnerability. Sally's expression softened as he heard the vulnerable tone in your voice. He squeezed your hand. Of course we'll be friends. He said, his eyes meeting yours. You're one of the most important people in my life. I'm not just going to cut you out. He nodded, feeling a small flicker of relief. At least you wouldn't be completely losing him. You took a big deep breath, trying to push down the wave of sadness and hurt that overwhelmed you. Okay. He said, your voice coming out a little hoarse. I get it. I'm just going to miss you. A lump formed in your throat as you tried to keep your emotions in check. I'm going to miss you a lot. You repeated. Your voice barely above a whisper. You're such a big part of my life, it's gonna be so weird not being like this with you. A part you hadn't wanted to say, but it was true. You, you just felt so hurt. I mean, you understood why Sally was doing this, but you couldn't really help but feel like it was a mistake. That you and Sally could figure everything out and you'd be fine, but Deep down inside, you knew that just wasn't realistic. Are you sure? You asked, your voice pleading. Can't we just try work things out together? Sally let out a slow sigh, his eyes meeting your own. I wish we could, he said, his voice laced with regret. I, but I know myself. I know that if we stay together, I'm just going to end up hurting you more in the long run. A small flicker of anger ignited in you at Sally's words. How could he just decide that things were over without even trying to work on the issues you had together? How do you know that? You asked, your voice rising slightly. How do you know that we can't make it work? Sally's expression softened at your anger, but he didn't back down. I just do, he said, his voice firm. I know myself better than you know me. I know myself better than anyone, and I know I'm not in a good place for this right now, and I don't want to drag you down with me. You took a big deep breath trying to stay calm. You knew that arguing between the two of you wouldn't change a thing. Fine, you said, your voice tinged with anger. If that's what you want, and if that's what you think is best, I'm not going to stop you. Sally looked at you, the expression pained as he reached out to take your hand again. I know you're mad, he said, voice soft, but you have to understand. Please, this is hard for me too. You stood up, yanking your hand away from Sally. You were still feeling a mix of emotion. Anger, hurt, sadness, and the last thing you wanted was to sit around here and talk about it. I need to go, 
You said your voice clipped. Sally stood up too. A look of surprise on his face. This clearly wasn't how he saw this going. Wait, he said, reaching out to touch you. Please don't go. Not like this. You wanted to stop, but you couldn't. The anger was still coursing through your veins. Why not? He retorted. Is there anything else to say? You've made up your mind. And that's all. And then you left. And Sally watched as he fell, hearing the door slam. He really did it. But was it the right choice?